So we've had some time with the little baby 3070 now, and Michael Hyam, you're going to talk to me about how this powerful wee man performs. Is that correct? <laughs> I wouldn't call it a, call it small or cute or compact. It's still a full size car. Put it next but... to its brothers. Yeah. Put it next no, to its it... brothers, and it's it... a wee baby. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit smaller, but it still packs a huge punch. Uh, I mean, uh, just to kind of give a broad overview, the RTX 3070 performs on par or just barely behind the RTX 2080 Ti, based on my results, and that is that's really impressive for a $500 card. Um, of course, the jury's still out on whether or not you can actually find one and find one for MSRP. But the fact of the matter is that you can get top and high end enthusiast level performance for what is relatively an affordable price tag for a video card. So uh, that's really exciting to see that NVIDIA <laughs> came out the gate and said that the 3070 was going to perform on par or a little bit better than a 2080 Ti. Say no more. Uh, that was already an exciting prospect. Uh, but to finally put it to put it through its paces and see how close uh, it actually comes to those bold claims that Nvidia was putting out, it's uh, this is this is definitely the card you want to upgrade to. Yeah, like you said, jumping from 2080 Ti to 3070, and like 2080 Ti is still that expensive. Mm -hmm. And now, assuming you can get one, like you said, 3070 is quite the quote unquote entry level, but. Let's talk about some of the games you were playing with. Like I know you've you were, you were really like, putting it through its paces. There any standout performances? Like you've I mean, we've got your full review and your full breakdown on site right now. But what mm -hmm. are some like the standout wow moments from some of the games you were testing? Uh, I think that I will I'll talk about control first because that is a case in which uh, the Nvidia tech really gets the flex. There's DLSS and there's a full ray tracing suite available on control. Control can be a very demanding game, so. Um, yeah, at 4K, when you turn all those settings on and use DLSS, uh, it pretty much the, the the performance difference between the 2080 Ti and the 3070, it, they perform basically the same. Uh, same thing that we see at 1440p. Uh, so regardless of the resolution, you're going to get that same level of performance. But the thing is, is that with ray tracing, I think that even uh, with these powerful cards, I think that 4k with a full suite of ray tracing is still hitting uh you're not gonna get 60 fps out of it uh so this card like don't expect to max everything out with ray tracing at 4k but what we see at 1440p is performance that that's you know you can get 60 fps and you can manage those frame rates at a very very playable um a very very playable experience um but like if you want to do you can do 4k with this card like fairly easily you just got to turn some things down uh metro exodus is one where it's a lot more demanding but again this is another case in which we cranked everything to its max um and the fact that it can put out this level of performance is uh pretty exciting because not everyone's going to play at 4k and not everyone's gonna like crank every single setting to its maximum so these are scenarios in which we're like really pushing these cards um, so if it lags behind the 2080 Ti, the 3070 is probably only like four or five percent behind it, which isn't that much. Like you're not going to, those aren't really noticeable differences when you're actually playing games. Um, so that's really cool to see these high-end games with a full ray tracing suite um, performing at this level. Or someone who's, you know, after a new GP but doesn't want to break the bank, like looking at your stats on a 3070, 1440p, Average FPS of 52.9 with everything cranked on Metro Exodus. Like that's that's really impressive. I expected there to be more compromise when it came to getting NVIDIA's let's call it lower tier card when it comes to performance frames per second. But it doesn't sound like there's nearly as many compromises as I thought. Like everything all, all the numbers seem to suggest that. You're not giving that up that much when it comes to performance. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And since you mentioned that, I think uh, to put it into perspective when it comes to the, compared to the 3080, um, of course, it's a case by case uh, basis in how how much it, it lags behind. Um, and when I say lags behind, I don't mean that in like a detrimental sense because 
this is a 200, this is a card that's $200 cheaper than the 3080. So generally, I saw about anywhere from 20 to 30% uh, performance um, decreases when going from the 3080 to the 3070. And that's, that's a reasonable gap for the $200, uh, the $200 gap in terms of pricing. Uh, so I think that the, the, the pricing and the performance that you get out of it are lining up really well. Um, and I say this in my review is that not everyone wants the super high end stuff. Uh, if some people may have 4K displays and they just want, they want manageable performance with that. 3070 is going to give you that. Or if you're at 1440p and you have a high refresh rate monitor and you have a good enough CPU, the 3080 obviously is going to let you hit those higher frame rates, but you can still get those super high frame rates with the 3070. So, uh, it just depends on what your expectations are. And 3070 really, really does provide that. And there, there are some cases where, especially at 1440p, when things start to be more CPU bound, that's another thing to consider is like, like I mentioned just a few moments ago, depends on what CPU you have. There are some cases in which the 3080 only provides like a 10 to 12% boost over the 3070 because some games are just naturally CPU bound. And when you're at 14, if you're at 1440p, um, you really need to think about whether or not you, you're actually going to get the most out of a 3080 and whether or not you can just like pocket a few bucks and go with the 3070 uh, right there. So that, that's another kind of factor that you need to consider. 4K, 3080 is your card. 3070 can do that, but you know, if you want to crank a few things down, if you don't mind that to maintain 60, even higher FPS, man, 3070 is, is, is very impressive. Uh, again, like we've been saying it this whole time, but it, it's really cool to see a, a card that's a little bit more affordable do something like this. Uh, so yeah, it just, you know, it, it just really depends on what your scenarios and what, what your expectations are. Um, but across the board, I think that um, 3070 is definitely a card you want to be looking at. I think uh, affordability is one thing. Availability is another thing at the minute. I think that as I mean, there's a reason why they're sold out as well, right? Like people are excited for them. People can see the their use case for them, but combining that with the troubles Nvidia has had in actually getting the products to the people, it might be a little tricky to get some of these cards, but across the next year, easily, I think people are gonna be snatching these up as soon as they become available and, and for good reason. Like all the all the points you made in your review and today, it's it's a very strong case for that, you know, quote unquote entry level card to the new generation of graphics and we've we've seen even more just today like the radeon announcement was an hour ago so seeing the 3070 and you know the whole 3k series against radeon's family of cards now as well all that combined like i don't think anyone's going to be really left wanting if they want beautiful graphics on their desktop right yeah yeah that that's that that is a very good thing to bring up is availability uh, i we mentioned it a little bit uh in the front end of this conversation but yeah it's one thing to have a really good card perf like perform like this it's another thing to actually try and find one uh whether or not you should be worrying about them being in stock uh which is to ask whether or not you need to be uh upgrading um I think that if you're on a GTX 10 series, like if you have a GTX 1080, which has been a wonderful card ever since it came out. But it's time to put it out to pasture. <laughs> it's starting to show its age. Uh, been a wonderful card. One of the best like uh, high-end cards that we've seen in a while. It's been really able to hold its own. But now's the time. Uh, if, you, if you are itching to move uh, to a better card, if you're moving on from 1080p to 1440p, or if your games at 1080p are starting to lag behind because you're cranking up a whole bunch of other settings, the 3070 is that sweet entry point that you want to move to. Uh, if you have, if you have an RTX, I guess, 2070 or better, I don't think you need to worry about these cards uh, unless you're unless you're really itching for better performance. Uh, like the 2070, 2070 Super um, are still really, really good cards. I don't think the 3070 is going to give you that much of a boost uh, if you jump from those cards. But I also don't, I, if you got those cards, you got them pretty recently. So I wouldn't even consider, uh, just take that out of your mind. Don't even worry about it. 
And anyone who's got a 2080 Ti is probably not watching the video, so we don't need to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, don't even watch this video. If you have a 2080 Ti, <laughs> what do you, I'm surprised you even made it this far in the discussion. Uh, uh, but yeah, 3070 is, a, is an alternative to the 2080 Ti uh, for those who don't have that card. Now they can access something that is as powerful as that. So if you're on a GTX 10 series, if you're on GTX 9 series, which I know some people have, uh, have been riding out their 9070s, or 970s, sorry, uh, they're 970s for quite a long time now. Uh, this is this is the move that you want to make. Sounds like a great card. Sounds like there's a lot of people that are going to want to get it. I wish you all good luck. If you forget <laughs> one, don't scalp it. Don't scalp it. Don't be that person. All right? No scalpers allowed here at GameSpot.com. You know it is allowed. More great PC gaming content. So make sure you subscribe for that. Because across all these new cards coming out, both Michael and I are going to be testing them, comparing them. Making sure you guys are all nice and informed to get those sweet, sweet frames and 4K displays. Alright? Good. Stay tuned. And we'll see you next time. This is...